In this video, we'll look at the characteristics of the P-channel MOSFET. Here we show an N-channel and P-channel MOSFET side by side. We'll call these NMOS and PMOS devices for short. Both have a gate region that's conducting and separated from the channel region by a thin insulator, silicon dioxide in the case of silicon transistors. In the P-channel MOSFET, the source and drain are P-type, whereas in the N-channel MOSFET, their N type. So, whereas the N channel MOSFET required a positive gate source voltage in order to invert the channel, the P channel MOSFET requires a negative gate source voltage. So, you see the polarity of this source is flipped around in order to attract N type carriers to the channel region, uh, sorry, P type uh, carriers to the channel region and form an induced P type channel to allow for conduction between drain and source. Now in the N channel transistor, then our convention was to define the drain as being the terminal at the higher voltage as shown here. That's because the source of a MOSFET is the source of the majority charge carriers flowing in the channel region. So with a positive voltage on the drain, we would expect positive current flow in the direction indicated here. But since that current will be carried by the majority carriers, it's actually this region that will be the source of the charge carriers. The electrons will enter here and exit the drain. Uh, so a net flow of electrons from source to drain means a positive current flow from drain to source in an N-channel transistor. On the other hand, in P-channel transistors, holes are the majority charge carriers. So the convention is that the source should be the higher potential and the drain is the lower potential. The source is the source of the majority carriers, holes. Holes enter the source and exit the drain. And with a net flow of positive charge carriers from source to drain, we have positive current flow in the direction indicated here. So in the P-channel transistor, current typically flows from source to drain, whereas in the N-channel transistor it flows from drain to source and the polarity of the drain source voltage is typically reduced, uh, uh, flipped in the P-channel transistor. So in summary, for enhancement mode devices, the polarity of the gate source voltage and the polarity of the drain source voltage is reversed in P-channel transistors. So this can create a lot of negative signs in your calculations and expressions for P-channel transistors. Um, so very often we'll just use absolute values to create expressions that work for both N-channel and P-channel transistors. But it'll be important, therefore, to just keep in mind what the typical polarities are of all the voltages for P-channel and N-channel transistors so that um, you're doing the calculations properly. Here we show the schematic symbols for the NMOS and PMOS devices side by side. You remember this four terminal symbol has an arrowhead to remind us of the polarity of the PN junction between body and the channel region. In the N-channel transistor, the body is the P-type terminal, the channel is N-type, so the arrow points this way. Whereas in P-channel transistor, the corresponding symbol looks like this, with the arrow pointing the other way, because the channel is P-type and the body is N-type. The second symbol here for the NMOS transistor shows all four terminals, with an arrowhead reminding us of the direction of normal current flow from drain to source. The arrowhead always appears on the source terminal. So for the P-channel transistor, the arrowhead still appears on the source terminal, but now it's pointing into the channel because the typical direction of current flow in a PMOS is from source to drain. So again, which terminal the arrowhead is in tells us which is the source, the direction the arrowhead is pointing tells us the direction of current flow, whether it's PMOS, and from that we can infer whether it's a PMOS or NMOS transistor. Current flowing into the source is a P-channel transistor. Current flowing out of the source is an N-channel transistor. And then finally, the last symbols look just like the second ones here, except that the body terminal is omitted to simplify the schematic. Again, we'll most often use these because we're going to normally connect the body terminal, either short it to the source, or we're going to connect it to 
voltages that keep reverse bias across all the PN junctions in the MOSFET structure. Now for an N-channel transistor, that would be done by connecting the body to the lowest voltage that we expect to arise anywhere in the circuit. Whereas for a P-channel transistor, because the body terminal is N-type, we need to connect it to the highest voltage that we see anywhere in the circuit in order to ensure all the uh, depletion reg regions remain intact. Um, so uh, and when you buy a discrete component MOSFET, you'll often only get three terminals. In such cases, the body is actually internally shorted to the source. This is the case for both P-channel and N-channel discrete devices that you get with only three terminals. So in such cases, it's really on you as the user to make sure that in the case of P-channel transistors, you apply voltages only with the polarity shown here. And for N-channel transistors, you make sure the source is at the lower voltage. Um, otherwise, you risk forward biasing the body drain junction. Here we've got schematic cartoons to remind us of the terminal voltages that give rise to the various modes of operation of the NMOS and PMOS transistors. So remember for the NMOS transistor, the gate source voltage has to exceed the threshold voltage by an overdrive voltage in order to turn it on. And having done so, the transistor will either be in triode or in saturation depending on the drain source voltage. If the drain source voltage is less than VOV, it's in triode. If it's more than VOV, it's in saturation. The situation for the PMOS transistor is shown here. The gate has to be below the source by an amount equal to the absolute value of the threshold voltage. Again, strictly speaking, the threshold voltage for a normal enhancement mode PMOS device is negative, but we can just talk about absolute values to keep things simple. Again, remembering that the gate has to be below the source potential. And the amount by which that drop exceeds the threshold voltage is the overdrive voltage of the P-channel transistor. Um, so in order to, having you know biased the gate that way, the transistor is now turned on and it will either be in triode, depending on how far below the source the drain voltage is. If it is below the source voltage only a little bit by less than an overdrive voltage, then we're in triode. If the drain is way below the source voltage by more than an overdrive voltage, then we're in saturation. Just remember that in both cases, for very small values of VDS, the transistor will be in triode. That is the linear region. So to have some understanding of the IV relationship of the MOSFETs, we use this experiment here where we bias the gate source voltage so that the transistor is turned on and then slowly sweep the drain source voltage. And this is the characteristic we saw for an NMOS transistor. If VGS was less than the threshold voltage, we're in cutoff and there's no current flowing. VGS exceeds the threshold voltage. Then for small VDS, we're in triode and the plot looks linear. And then the quadratic nature starts to reveal itself for VDS approaching VOV. Once VDS equals the overdrive voltage, the drain current saturates. Now, for the P-channel transistor, again, you'll notice the polarities are reversed. The source is now below, uh, the, the, the source voltage is now above the gate in order to turn the transistor on. And again, the source voltage is also above the drain voltage as we, and we sweep that. So, um, but having defined the polarities properly, we get a very similar looking pot, plot. The x-axis here is now the source to drain voltage drop, but we can just think of this as VDS in absolute terms. Just remembering that for PMOS transistor, the normal operation is with the source voltage above the drain voltage. Similarly, the overdrive voltage, we just think about its absolute value. And then having defined things this way, we see a very similar looking curve. For small values of VDS, we're in triode, VDS increases in absolute sense, and then eventually we enter saturation once the absolute value of VDS exceeds the overdrive voltage. 
we get the same expressions for the channel resistance and triode and for the square law current and saturation. The only difference being the constant here is kp prime instead of kn prime. Recall that for NMOS transistors, kn prime was mu n, the mobility of electrons, times c ox. So for PMOS transistors, we've got kp prime, which is the mobility of holes, up times c ox. Now, usually for transistors that are fabricated side by side on the same chip, C ox will be the same for both devices because the gate oxide layer is sort of grown or deposited simultaneously for all transistors on the circuit at once. So they um, become the same thickness and they're all made of silicon dioxide. So you've got the same per unit area gate capacitance for both the PMOS and NMOS transistors. But the carrier mobilities do differ. Remember that typically carrier mobility for electrons is greater than that of holes. So that gives rise to a difference in these voltage current relationships. Specifically, for the same overdrive voltage and transistor aspect ratio, we would expect more current to flow in an NMOS transistor than in a PMOS transistor. Now this is just a typical situation, but keep in mind that there's always exceptions. There are, for example, PMOS transistors engineered to have high carrier mobility, comparable to that of the NMOS transistor. The best way to get comfortable with all these expressions and the reversing polarities associated with doing analysis with both N-channel and P-channel MOSFETs is simply to practice doing the analysis.